So what I'd like to do now is uh, transition to a panel discussion. First of all, I'd like to invite Paul Sandler, Vice President and General Manager of HP's Hyperscale Computing Division, a fellow, fellow Texan. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd also like to introduce Richard Fachera. Richard is with uh, Forrester Research. Richard's one of the first guys who had a crazy idea that this stuff might actually work. And he started writing about it when everybody else thought Richard was nuts. Um, nice to be right, huh? At least, you know, what they say, a broken clock is right at least once or twice a day. Twice, <laughs> twice a day. Yeah. Better be twice a day. And finally, I'd like to invite Niall Dalton. Uh, Niall is the director of high frequency trading of Cantor Fitzgerald. Niall, great to see you, Carl. Great to see you. Thanks. So uh, I've got a couple questions. I promise uh, I'll go kind of easy on you guys, but I'd really like to start with, with you, Paul. I mean, you're, HP is the biggest server company in the world. And um, for you to go out and come up with the new architecture, you must be seeing something in the marketplace that's uh, leading you to make these investments and make these decisions. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're seeing in the marketplace? And yeah, it, it's kind of what you said, talked about earlier, it's growth. You know, um, I work with all the big customers that are really um, challenged with providing the infrastructure and the capabilities for all these new applications that are coming online. Um, and, and they just cannot keep up with the growth. Uh, they've got these established customers have um, such big websites. Every time they add in one new feature, they have to cascade it across so many millions of customers that it takes chunk sizes of servers um, overall. And we don't see the growth st slowing down, especially with um, all the stuff that's going on with Hadoop and all the analytics. Um, I've got a lot of customers that are, are, are bringing Hadoop clusters on to mine data, and the return on investment for them providing this new greenfield Hadoop stuff is like months. You know, they can actually pay for it. So we do not see it, um, we do not see the growth, uh, you know, un it's unrelentless. Mm -hmm. Relentless growth, mm -hmm. and that means you know more power, more data center servers, and and everything that you talked about here. So that's really true. I was I was on the phone with a bank a couple of weeks ago, and and um, I kind of gave them the pitch, and I said they said, well, what is it good for? And I said, well, it's really good for Hadoop. And the CIO asked one of his guys, well, do we run much Hadoop? And the guy says, not really, boss, but but within two or three years, we'll probably need a whole data center running nothing but Hadoop. Yeah, the growth rate for Hadoop is really exponential. It's pretty scary. Yeah, very scary. So, so can you tell, tell, share with the audience and also the, the web audience uh, out there that may not yeah. have seen your event today? What, I, I you hear you're broadcasting today? this at the Ast Austin Alamodrome. I was just a there. Ast hey. Al yeah. I, it's at the, uh, at the Austin Draft House, yeah. at the Alamo Draft House, also in uh, Orlando at the, the Developer Summit. Cool. Now, I understand there's some company down in Santa Clara that might be watching it, too. I don't know. <laughs> What's that all about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Not going to touch that with 10-foot pole. So what did you guys announce this morning? Uh, so we announced Project Moonshot, which is um, actually uh, three components to it. It's the uh, first, which is a Redstone server development platform, which we are excited about. That is a really cool chunk of hardware there. Right? I mean, really excited. The hardware geek in me comes out, right? Uh, we also announced a, um, the HP Discovery Lab. And the Discovery Lab is a place that we can bring um, the platform so that customers can touch it, feel it, play with it, load up their applications, and really kind of kick the tires, especially as we're coming up to the, you know, bring up, the bring up phase. And then the third thing is a partner program, the HP Pathfinder program. And that's pulling down, uh, pulling together all the uh, software partners and the hardware partners that are required to really uh, bring this, uh, you know, in. And, and make this successful in the industry, all the people who have the same visionary idea. So yeah, it's really exciting, and it's exciting to be working with you guys on that. Well, that's thrilling, and we're, we're really happy to be working with you guys. I can tell you, I've talked to all of our trailblazers, and uh, every one of them wants to join your Pathfinder program. So awesome. uh, they'll, they'll just jump right in and be part of the program. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, Niall is, um, I gotta tell you a story. So, so, as you go out there marketing and selling this stuff, you find people who want to do stuff with it that you're like, I don't think so. So Niall calls me up, he introduces himself, and he says, I've got this uh, big you know, high-frequency trading platform. I'd like to learn more about your chip. And I pretty much started telling him not to, not to bother. I said, you know what, Niall, we're, we don't have a lot of floating point. Remember the conversation? I do. We don't have a lot of floating point. Uh, but I'm happy to tell you about it. What, t t why don't yeah. you take it from there? Well, that was a fun conversation. Um, I think we, we both kind of looked at each other, as it were, and kind of said, well, do you really know what we do? <laughs> so everyone thinks about high-frequency trading as we're going to take this insane message rate, could be millions of messages a second, and we're going to respond in microseconds, and we're going to try and make money against this. 
And that's absolutely true. That's, that's what our business is. Um, and I'm always going to be buying processors that are as fast as possible to do that, right? But I also have other workloads. So then I, I went and explained that, well, yes, um, you know, you've kind of said, I'm not a floating point monster. Well, I've got some workloads that, yes, I, I need floating point. I, I love floating point. I've got workloads that are perfect. But let me tell you about my other workloads. And actually, these are the workloads that I start reaching out to interesting people and saying, you know, are you working on a chip that might be good for this? So these types of workloads are where we're really concerned about throughput. And it's, it's taking all of that data, and it's not just the last microseconds worth of data, it's taking all the market data over you know, the last three years, and I've got some idea and I want to simulate it or backtest it. Well, I need to run a simulation across all of that data. Oh, and by the way, I've got a, a bunch of different parameters. I've got you know, three or four different parameters here. I'd like to vary them, so that's, you know, start multiplying this out. I've got a lot of work I need to get through. It's a pure throughput problem. And what I care about is what do my metrics look like in terms of getting through that, all of that work together, right? So I think we had a fun conversation around that, and I, re I remember showing them. Um, I can give you a little demo of what a cut down little piece of our software might look like. And we walk through that, yes, we have this high frequency stuff, we have this in-memory stuff, and we've got all this throughput stuff. And then, oh, by the way, and I broke out to a shell, and I, I remember the reaction on the phone. I already had it running on an ARM board. Right, so we'd already looked at ARM processors as something that were interesting from a, you know, an efficiency point of view, power efficiency. And then I started saying, you know, I've got a list of demands, by the way. Right? <laughs> you guys are going to build a, a server processor, right? Because, you know, I need I.O., right? I, I need to talk to the network a lot. I need to talk to storage a lot. And then I think we clicked. Yep. I think we realized that we had actually uh, found an, an unusual combination, but one that's actually pretty much in sync with certain important chunks of our workload. Exactly. So when you, when you started moving your software and, and trying to test it on ARM, can you tell us a little bit about that? Was that as difficult as, uh, as some people fear, or did it go pretty smooth? Well, I distinctly remember the first time I tried to do this, and uh, it, it passed my initial and probably my most important test, which is uh, before I finished my first cup of coffee in the morning, could I get a piece of code up and running? That was, that was my first test. It was like, let me take an ARM development board, let me take a chunk of my code, you know, does it pass this initial test? And it just worked, right? I mean, you log in, it's, it's a Linux server, right? Unless you know where to look, you might not even realize it's not you know, running on an environment that you're used to. Um, is the debugger there? Yes. Is the C compiler there? Yes. Oh, well, cool. It probably took more energy to make that cup of coffee than it did to run my initial <laughs> test program. So it was actually a very straightforward transition, and uh, you know, I found it to be a solid environment. Awesome, awesome. Well, we look forward to uh, supporting you in your efforts. And helping you guys make even more obscene amounts of money. <laughs> I'm very excited to be evaluating the technology. And I, I think besides the workloads that we already have that I think can run on this, um, I'm excited about other potential workloads well, that we can and think of course, about. You know, the name Cantor Fitzgerald means a lot to a lot of people. So having you as um, a company that's interested in us is uh, quite an honor. And so we're very Thank glad you. to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you.